Would you like to spend more money than you already do fishing? Why not try filming it? What's going on everybody? My name is Brian. You're watching Angling Anarchy and today's video is going to be talking about video. Um, a lot of people are getting into having a GoPro in the boat, not necessarily to film and do a YouTube channel, but just for their, their own use. I mean, it's basically just to level up from having pictures of your fish. It's a cool way to, for musky fishermen anyway, to see how fish react at the side of the boat, how you react at the side of the boat, maybe things you can improve on. Sort of your game film, uh, if you will, that you can look back on and maybe improve yourself. Uh, on top of just being able to film memories, I did a series a little while back, and I think I still have to finish it, quite honestly, uh, of a couple days. Uh, my dad and I were up in Northwest Ontario on Eagle Lake. I just started filming, so the footage wasn't the greatest, but uh, I got a lot of cool interactions between my, my dad and I when we were catching fish just in the boat that, uh, that I can look back on forever. So a really cool way to preserve those memories, if nothing else. Let's jump right into it. Um, I've got a lot of cameras in the boat, so I'll go over everything I have in here. Uh, it's probably overkill, but I just want to make sure I get every possible angle I can. So here we go. Camera number one is, uh, for me, is a chest cam. I always have a chest cam on. Uh, biggest reason is audio. Um, if you see this little tuft right here, there you go. That little tuft is a piece of dead cat. That is over the microphone of this GoPro Hero 4 Silver. I find the Hero 4 Silver has the best internal mic uh, that GoPro has ever come up with. Uh, probably just my personal opinion, but I don't care for anything after that because they made the cameras intrinsically waterproof, which means they had to make a waterproof mic, and I just think it doesn't sound as good. But I like having a chesty, mainly for audio. I tend to wear it up a little bit higher on my chest. That way your hands aren't getting in the way. That's the complaint most people have about it. I find it to be a little bit more stable than a head cam because you're constantly moving your head around. Your chest uh, typically stays a little bit more stationary. And I still get pretty good footage off of this. If I don't, if my hands are in the way, I have multiple other cameras that I can cut to. So those are a couple reasons I like having the chest cam. Audio is first and foremost because even a really good video with crappy audio just turns it into a crappy video so you got to have good audio <laughs> the next cameras are these guys up here on this pole i got the idea of doing this from watching uh, mike keys i have to give him all the props in the world uh, i was watching his musky fishing show that made me want to try to start filming myself and the perspectives that he had in some of the earlier shows was from a pole such as this two cameras bow and stern. Uh, so that's what I did. This is three quarter inch conduit. And let's see if I can, the boat's a little bit of a mess here, but let's see if we can get this down here. So the way I have this held on, this is the stabilizer support that you would use on a trolling motor typically. So it is a one and a half inch ball with uh, the one and a half inch arm. The part that would typically go on the trolling motor, I put on the pole. The other is uh, attached to the gunnel. Now, what the reason this is so sturdy is if you look down here, there is a base. So I have two points of contact for this pole, which makes it incredibly sturdy. This little piece down here is a one inch conduit hub. Uh, I put a piece of aluminum on the underside, so this pole isn't digging into the carpet it's actually sitting on another piece of aluminum underneath the conduit hub and then i just tapped it for quarter 20 screws so i have set screws nice and solid i can run wide open with this thing up uh if if i go to eagle lake in ontario when we usually keep the boats on the dock 
all I have to do is put a bag over the cameras. I leave this up for a week at a time, never have to take it down. I don't care how bad the waves get, it's perfect. That's one of the things you're going to find that you need to do if you're gonna start filming, is have a way that you're not constantly screwing around with the cameras. This for me is a beautiful way to do that because I can, once I get these cameras set, it's good to go. And quickly, the way that I get them set is I use the GoPro app on my phone so I can adjust the cameras, get it exactly how I want it to look, and then once that's done, turn them on, turn them off, hit record, and away you go. Another set of cameras that I have are right on the gunnel. These are cool because it catches everything uh, at water level. If you've got fish jumping, if you reach over to grab a fish, muskies in a figure eight, that sort of thing. And attach them any way you can. If you have a rail, I have these uh, rod holder mounts. I've made ram mounts uh, that will screw into these actually so I can uh, adjust them. If you can see back there, I've got another ram ball back here. Uh, so ram mounts, I, I like them uh, for getting cameras throughout the boat. They're nice and sturdy. Uh, these GoPro clamps are a good way to put cameras just about anywhere too. You can clamp them to anything. Uh, windshields, rails. So uh, that's what I do. I like having these two cameras. Uh, again, pointing forward, pointing back. Captures, netting the fish, that sort of thing. What I like to do with these, and this is maybe getting a little bit technical, but these cameras I have set up at a higher frame rate. So when I want to do a slow motion shot, I can slow it down without losing uh, any of the smoothness that you would. These are filming at 120 frames per second. And yeah, that's these cameras. Something I've added to my arsenal uh, recently and I've talked about in previous videos is one of these YOLO tech sticks. These weren't really around when I started filming, so most of my boat was, I, I just came up with all the stuff. It was what I had to do to get a camera in the boat. These things are slick because they actually plug right into and use the power from your navigation light ports so you can have it on the front and the back. I know guys that put the ports all around their boat so they can move their YOLO tech sticks wherever they'd like to. This is the 53 inch one. There are two USB ports on the back side to power. You can actually put two cameras up here if you get the right uh, attachments. Uh, I'll have a link in the description below where you can click on it and check out all the products from Yellow Tech. But this is, I, I recommend those for people that are just getting into this and don't want to go hog wild like I did and set everything up in the boat. This is a nice easy way to do it. Uh, for me, it's cool because if I hop in somebody else's boat and I want to film, uh, it's a nice easy way for me to do that. They actually give you multiple different collars uh, for this. So whatever type of navigation light port your boat has, or your friend's boat has, you can just take the little screw off, slide it off, slide the collar on that will fit whatever they have in their boat. That covers the action cams that I use. So the GoPros, some guys have Sony's, I think Garmin makes it. There's, there's all sorts of different action cams. I like GoPros, it's what I started using. I like the app, so I just, I stick with it. The GoPros I have on the post up here are Hero 3s and 4s. The ones on the gunnel that I showed you that I said I film at a higher frame rate, those are Hero 7s. Uh, most of the GoPros I've bought, I buy on Amazon, uh, refurbished. Uh, I've never had a problem with it, so you can get them a little bit cheaper than what they would be full price. So if you're like me and you have a lot of cameras, I do have a bag that I just kind of keep all the cameras in. It's not super organized. Um, you can use a Plano box. I don't know if you can see that. But that's got all my batteries, um, mounts, just little odds and ends. So you can put those in there. I do have another bigger box that uh, has a lot of wires and filters. I've got these uh, UV, or not UV filters, polarized filters that I use on the cameras. All the stuff that I talk about, if you're curious about it and I didn't talk about it enough, you can ask me a question in the comments below or on the 
Angling Anarchy Facebook page. And just about everything I use, I put an Amazon link to in the description below. So if you go down there, uh, I've got it listed, and then there's a link there that you can click on to actually find it to buy it. On to the main camera. So the camera that I'm filming with right now, it's a little bit nicer camera. It's The one I'm using isn't super high end. Uh, you can go nutty and spend thousands of dollars on a nice uh, DSLR. Mine is a mirrorless camera. But this is a Canon M50, and I'm going to switch to another shot so I can show you what I'm talking about right now. So we'll switch to that. So the camera itself is actually mounted onto this handy dandy holder. This is nice because uh, when you're in the boat, just holding on to the camera itself, uh, it, you know, I don't want to drop this thing in the water. So having it in this camera holder is really nice. Uh, it lets you stabilize the camera and obviously it lets you add some accessories so i've got two of these little uh, i believe the brand name is ulanzi lights uh, they flip on they're nice little led lights you can adjust the brightness of them so if you're fishing towards dark uh, you can get a little bit of light on the subject that you're filming and of course on top is the microphone it's a very nice microphone i believe it's about a 150 or 200 dollars microphone shotgun mic and Again, audio is everything, so having that dead cat on there kills the wind noise. Uh, it's a shotgun mic. This microphone is nice because when you have the camera turned on, or as soon as you turn the camera on, the microphone turns on as well. So you never have to forget about turning the microphone on and off. It just automatically turns on when you turn the camera on. So that is my, what I would call my main camera setup. When we get a fish in the boat, we'll use that to get a nice shot of it. And obviously I use it for all my intros, outros, that sort of thing. Now you can obviously do way less than this or you could go nutty and have way more. Uh, another camera I'm not really gonna touch on that hard is the drone that I have. Uh, it makes for some cool b-roll uh, and additional shots, but I don't use it a ton, but it is a, a cool tool to have. One camera that people I think overlook a ton is your phone. Phones, I don't care if it's an Android or an Apple or what you have, phones take fantastic footage these days. You can actually go in and set up your frame rate, uh, your f-stop, all that technical stuff that I won't get into right now, um, but you can really shoot nice footage with your phone. So just make sure you turn it to landscape. Don't make the mistake of filming uh, up and down. It doesn't look so good. You know, you buy an action camera and you have your phone, You've got two cameras now, and you can, if you want to put a video together, you can switch back and forth between those two. So instead of just one static shot, you can add a little bit of a dynamic feel to, your, to a video that you might want to edit together by switching back and forth between the two cameras. I've done one of these videos before. I will leave a link to that below. You can take a look at that and see what I was filming with before. Pretty much the same. This main camera has been upgraded. I added the YOLO tech stick. I'll also put up here and in the description below a video that I did previously about how I power all these cameras uh, and am able to film all day again without monkeying with them because that is the thing that frustrates most people is you're in the boat, you want to fish, you want to film too, but you want to fish more. So filming is usually the, th the thing that suffers uh, because if you're trying to film with batteries, you're changing them out all the time. Uh, looping is another thing I talk about in the video that I'll link below that you can look into that really helps with editing and not filling up your SD cards. So there is a lot of things to think about. This is just a quick overview and I encourage anyone, if you have questions, please put them in the comments below or you can hit me up on Facebook on the Angling Anarchy page and send me any questions. I'm more than happy to answer them for you and try to help you out because I really do think filming is a cool thing to do. Again, if you're not going to make videos, that's fine, but just to have that, you know, those interactions with your friends, your your parents in the boat, uh, just very cool pieces of memories that you can have forever. Well, I hope that helps. And again, hit me up with any questions you have. Uh, more than happy to answer them for you. I need to get home because we are going to have a fish fry. And if I don't get going very quickly, I'm going to be in trouble. So with that, folks, 
I'm going to take off. I hope this helped. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we're heading to Ohio to go musky fishing in a week from now. So hopefully if we catch something, you'll be seeing that as well. Thanks everyone for watching. I really do appreciate it. I will see you on the next video.